family of six, and um, I was expecting another baby. The diagnosis I got was, you're having twins. <laughs> I remember thinking to myself, um, you know, what, four kids isn't enough? They discovered that there was a problem for Joel. We needed to do, do an emergency C-section. Come to find out, the umbilical cord was wrapped around his neck, and every time I'd have a contraction, it would shut off the oxygen, oxygen to his brain. Besides the fact that he was having trouble eating, his body was very stiff, he couldn't move like his sister who was lying in the crib right next to him. When he was six months old, we were told that he, had, he did indeed have cerebral palsy. I think it was a kind of traumatic time for, for the children too. I was in the car um, and remember how uh, upset my mo mom was. She, she cried, um, I think, almost all the way home. And of course, as a kid that's 10 years old, you wonder yourself, wow, you know, how, how bad is, is this? We were never given him much hope, ever, for what he could accomplish. Because they told us he would never walk. Well, he didn't walk till he was five years old. But I can't tell you what pleasure I took in taking him by the hand that, that fall and walking him into the classroom. That was sweet. Diana right away got got involved because we didn't know anybody that, that had a special needs child. Someone referred me to a group in Jefferson County called Mother's Mutual. That was my first interaction with other mothers who had children with disabilities, but I could see that they were coping <laughs> and that they were getting through it. And at some point, I was asked to be the chairman for Mother's Mutual and that meant I would be going to ARC board meetings. And so that's how I got involved with the ARC. I heard somebody say once, if your children never leave home, somehow you failed. Well, <laughs> that's true if they're able to leave home, but he's not able to leave home. He's gonna always need somebody to help him. I wish he were able to have a family like the other kids have. You know, he'll never have that, and it's, it's sad. We have never had an empty nest. It's kind of difficult, and it's limited us. Do uh, you still uh, realize that, uh, that you've been dealt a different hand? Right now, I'm just taking it one step at a time, one day at a time. If mom and dad um, weren't here, there's not going to be an issue as far as um, Joel being taken care of. Outside of Joel's daily life. One of the things that I would definitely have to do is get um, involved with the ARC, understanding what it's going to take to, to see that he has that fulfilled life. I stay involved at the ARC because over the years you meet uh, and make really neat friendships. You have this thing in common that you don't have any place else. And it was an encouragement. And so it's a, it's a wonderful um, association.